Hi everyone, um, I thought I'd run you through a case study of a site that is um, about to go live. Um, it's good for a little bit of a case study to sort of see the before and after before the site gets blown away. Um, so this client is Wine Geelong, um, they represent all the Geelong wineries in the region. Um, you can see now this is their current site, um, which actually looks okay on first glance. Um, but um, having reviewed it, we found it just wasn't um, hitting the mark in terms of usability um, and um, fitting their strategy. So um, you can see here that, oops, um, you can see there's little tiles. You don't really know what each one is until you roll over. And of course, um, rollovers don't work on mobile, which is a bit of an issue. Um, the map is no longer working. There was a map there with the um, wineries and it's a bit thin um, and uh, news and events um, getting loaded in here um, okay but it does take up a lot of screen real estate a um, few other little issues the um, logo is really small in the corner there um, when you scroll down um, so it's not really present um, so um, what, what else uh, so the about section um, gives people a bit of an overview um, but when you go to about Wine Geelong you only have really one option and that is to uh, watch a video which is kind of broken it's not playing on the screen um, there's a section here for touring the region it doesn't have any headers it's very text based um, accommodation has some information. Too bad, but again, no headers. Um, um, and what, searching for wineries is actually really quite difficult um, because you can select, the idea is right, you can select uh, cellar door um, or type of wine, um, but it's a very long list with lots of things in that people don't really um, use the, the search function kind of works okay um, and you know you've got these little profiles here but obviously there's the Google Maps are broken um, so when so I'll just run through a few other little quirky things um, the events page um, again it's it's kind of okay um, but there's, you, you can search by regions, but um, um, functionality was all right, just mainly the look and feel. Um, news items, again, it's the same as events. Um, the contact us page is just a big thumping weird form. Um, and now the menu's disappeared because it's on white. Um, I can't really see what I'm doing now. Um, uh, and there's a login option. Uh, and this is really the crux of um, what Wine Geelong is all about. They um, have a members portal where members can get together and uh, view calendar items, uh, view minutes from meetings and resources. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it, it's. It's just for a new member, there's nothing really that appealing. It doesn't tell people what, why Wine Geelong exists and um, some member new stuff. Um, so yeah, it's got us quick. So let's go to the new site. Oh, it's also the search bar is um, really weird the way it is so huge. Um, so it's been around for about four or five years, I think. So it's kind of, it's probably dated and fallen apart a little bit now. So um, so we've been engaged to fix it. So let's now have a look at the new site. Ah, <sighs> doesn't that feel better? <laughs> um, so the new site, the branding is more present. Um, we workshop this new tagline. Um, for the Geelong Wine region, 
you get straight into exploring the wineries. But um, also on the front page here, um, gives people a little bit of relevance about why wine Geelong exists. Um, there's some features here they can get straight to, member benefits being one of them. So these are the sort of three things that we realised people need to get to. They need to search for wineries, search for events, and members um, need to be able to work out how to become a member. So there's sort of three key actions there. Um, some of the uniqueness uh, with uh, Geelong region is it's three regions in one, so it's a little thing about making sure we communicate that. Um, nice little video playing now. Um, now the events, uh, these are the major events that are held. They're, they're sort of a bit more present than before. Um, before they were sort of a bit hidden away, but now each one has its own branding. Um, so it's really kind of easy to see um, how they all link together. And there is actually a hidden section here so that when wineries add their events, they'll actually pop up based on an Instagram hashtag. Um, that's hidden away at the moment. Um, and then we have uh, an Insta feed from Wine Geelong, which is actually quite um, active. Um, and we've sort of removed this thumping before it was people were relying on finding their wineries in the footer um, but on um, mobile that actually ended up being quite a bit of a list so we've actually um, just tidied all this up um, and made it a bit more digestible um, so let's look at the site side by side um, so quite a, f a lot of new features here. Um, so their about page um, we, is now tells people a lot more about what they're about, um, who we are, their values. Um, we've got quotes um, all the way through the site, um, and there's um, there's like these pillars of information. So anything to do with wine. Anything to do with wine or wineries is sort of in this um, area. Uh, discovering the region and tourism is all sort of looped into this section here. And there's an interactive map, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, all the events are together, all the information to do with industry and about Wine Geelong and their role in the community is there. And then there's a members uh, portal there that we'll have a look at in a moment. Um, so let's start with the wineries list. Um, so another issue was the old site had to have a web developer update all the details. We've actually now changed that where uh, members can log in and actually change, update their own details. Um, so if we go look at one of the... Um, so this is all built from a dynamic list. Um, you can see here that um, each winery has their own profile. Um, and categories um, based on open times, sort of things that people will be searching for, um, detailed information, map, etc. Um, links to the social and website if they have them. Um, and I'll show you how that links into another section in a moment. Um, the regional profile. Um, kind of existed before, it was a bit buried away, but now um, sommeliers and people in the industry can get a good feel for the region, more detail. This, all this stuff is sort of aimed at the connoisseur, um, people really into their wine, looking for that general information about Geelong and its characteristics as a region. Um, great varieties. Uh, and this is kind of neat too, they had a lot of um, text here, but we've got these little things that pop out to keep reading more about each of these um, pieces of info, just to make it a little bit easier for people um, to uh, visitors to find what they need. Um, awards and accolades is also something we added because we noticed that there was lots of awards and accolades for the region, but it wasn't celebrated anywhere, so. Um, now, um, any post to do with recent awards um, or accolades sort of pops up in this section now. Um, 
it really showcases um, the region a bit better. Journalist awards for the region um, and past show results from the Geelong Wine Show. You can sort of look at all the different winning wines over the decade. Um, and vintage reports is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just another content page really um, with some deeper information there. Um, now let's go to the Discover um, section. So when we talked, to, we actually surveyed um, locals and, and uh, profiled what it is that they wanted um, out of a tool and it was basically they wanted to know uh, in one place um, what the characteristics of, of the um, winery that they're looking for are. So they might be, we're looking for a winery with cellar door and food um, in a specific region. Um, is it child friendly? Can you have events there? All these sorts of little uh, fields you can actually um, s apply the filter and, and find those wineries really quickly. Uh, <laughs> it might be a bit of a deep search at the moment because uh, this information is still being uh, populated by some of the wineries. Um, so there you go, you got really quickly you can see um, these wineries. You can add them to a wish list, so if you're sort of getting an idea of um, um, collect, like planning your trip, you can sort of um, quickly start to gather your um, preferences and then you can go and print that wish list later. Um, you can uh, click the little icon here and see it on the map. Um, so you can sort of get an idea of where it sits on the, in the region, how close to the water it is, that sort of stuff. Um, you can click and call them straight away or go straight to their Facebook social channels um, or when you click it um, you'll then go back to the original um, winery list um, here that again is maintained by um, the members. Um, so it sort of all ties in together. People can either browse for wineries or they can go through the interactive map and um, yeah, use, use it that way. Um, so quite a complicated tool but um, yeah, it's working <laughs> which is nice because uh, it took quite a bit of thinking to get that right. Um, even down to if you're looking for a specific white varietal in the old site that was really um, it was really messy to find and now it's sort of just tucked away. Um, here it was all jumbled in with everything else um, but now it's kind of nice and neat layout. Um, and then uh, this sort of other stuff is basically for tourists um, about the three sub-regions, why they're different, what's unique about them, how to get here, um, just trying to think if there's something unique about these pages. I mean, beautiful shots from some of the wineries, which we're really lucky to have, so that has really helped um, with the look and feel of the site. And this colour palette that we've used, the, um, the gold, red and black, actually ties in quite nice with the sort of earthy tones of some of the, um, of some of the uh, content, which is really, really nice. Okay, so this scope here to add tour guides um, later on and this uh, links to taste trails. Um, so if people to a region, coming to a region, they can download a trail map and it'll pop them over to, um, you know, some external resources um, that they can use. So it's all sort of in one place. Um, accommodation is... Um, got scope to be greater. Um, we've just included some um, of the key um, places here, um, but we've actually invited people to um, express interest to have their listings listed. Um, so there's a bit of a business case there to add some more. Um, the site at the moment does get some good traffic, um, but we're hoping 
it'll really start to increase now that the usability uh, and the presentation's been improved. Um, history is, is quite a nice feature too. There's a really interesting story here about the history of, of the um, region and going back to the Swiss settlers. Um, you know, some really nice maps here, historic maps. Um, and again, just presented in a way that's a bit easily digestible. Uh, more quotes. Um, so now the events, we have um, really only the major events at the moment. There's four major events that um, Wine Geelong um, hold every year. Uh, and each one of these will flick off to another um, mini site for each each one. And each, each um, event has its own. Um, branding, um, we've got register interest forms when when uh, they aren't ready to book and then once they become bookable that all activates and becomes the funnel for um, uh, for each event. Um, but the upcoming events can actually be sorted by um, just winery events or information about a specific event so it can all be um, filtered in the same place, which is a really nice feature. And the idea here is for wineries to encourage them to post their events and people can see what's on around the region rather than just what the major events are. Um, we've looked at the About section. Um, again, with industry news is interesting because we wanted to link some important information to the industry that's not just members only to kind of encourage them to get a feel for what's happening uh, for the members um, without posting any critical data. So, um, you know, if there's anything to do with industry news that's open to all wineries, then that sort of appears here. Um, there's uh, recent awards, which we also goes up to the awards section at the, at the front end um, for um, mainly the general public. Uh, these industry events are, are things that uh, the members do and it just sort of, uh, captures a, a bit of the community feel and because um, at the moment it, it, there was no real way of showing what the members are doing to anyone but other members so um, the concept is to sort of um, open up um, to open up the information and there's even member incentives here so the sort of things that our members get access to like winemaker wine tastings or member tours, end of harvest drinks, that sort of thing is uh, media training. Um, that gives members an, an idea of uh, what it is that you get for your membership. And there's also um, uh, surveys and feedback, um, um, which actually posts uh, the latest surveys um, and uh, invite to to feedback so people can actually get involved and um, let people let wine Geelong know um, what needs to change, what's good and bad, and then those results are published um, openly, which is really a nice way of being transparent in your business. Um, the become a member section. Um, there's a quite a few links around the site that drive people to this page, and um, you know actually directly. Um, uh, writing what it is that you get for your membership is a, and the pricing plan is just a really clear way of um, encouraging people to become part of it and setting the expectation rather than having to rely on someone to send you an email back with a very wordy pack on what it is that you get. Um, and there's also um, the frequently asked questions but um, pitched at the three different audiences which is the general public, non-members and members um, and they're kind of neat little blocks. Um, so that's all, I won't show the members stuff just yet because that's private data but um, um, that once you log in it does become unlocked and you get all the features of the, um, the previous member section but laid out in a much better way. So, um, oh, looks like I have to fix that link. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed um, the quick tour and the case study. And if you'd like to, some more information or you have a project um, that you think could benefit from this sort of layout, let me know and uh, we can chat. 
Okay, I've just restarted the video because I thought it would be important to show you the member section um, given it's such a crucial part of the site. So um, just have to make sure it's okay to demonstrate this. So um, the existing members portal um, is on this side uh, and then the new landing page is on uh, this side which is under members portal. Um, so let's log in so you can sort of see a side by side of each. Um, so before we had a lot going on on this um, on this page, um, we essentially we've we've done a very similar uh, thing here, but we've just kind of made it a little bit um, easier to read. So uh, we still have our calendar, we still have our minutes and our resources and directory, um, but. Um, We've given some instructions on how to use the news and updates section um, because essentially a member can actually um, post to different categories such as member news or meeting minutes um, and that will be viewable only to other members uh, and you'll see now there's a drop down list here um, with all the different categories that have become unlocked um, now that you're a member uh, whereas before it was all sort of jumbled in together. Um, and, uh, these are the categories that um, everyone can see um, and this is uh, what I was talking before about pushing awards and accolades or industry news or member benefits up to the front end of the site into the industry news um, and um, how to and the categories to use for public. So with a click of a button basically uh, a member or an admin can decide what area of the site um, each post can go to which is a really handy feature. Um, so I don't think the calendar was working before, no, I don't know what's happening there, but um, uh, what we've done is um, with the calendar on the new site, in fact I'm just going to hide that because it's ugly, <laughs> um, the calendar section um, now has um, some colour coding um, for uh, members to see um, where where events are and um, quickly see if it's industry training or um, public events. Um, so it's really a nice little feature to see all your calendar together. Um, we have um, the meeting minutes is, is quite um, straightforward. It's just a little document library. Um, but you know, all, all this works really well on mobile as well. So it all breaks down really nicely onto mobile. Um, the member news section is really where is the hub of um, where all the communication happens um, and um, there's even like a member discussion so members can actually post posts to uh, other members um, if they want to start a discussion point around something um, so it's not being utilised at the moment, but the idea is that then the comments from that can be can be viewed by members only. Um, and it, it's also anything covered in the newsletter that's missed sort of um, also appears on the site here. So um, members can look back at an archive of what's been happening. Um, the resources um, is... Uh, okay, we've got the surveys in there at the moment. So there's some resources there and that will flesh out a bit more as we get uh, more content. Uh, and there's also a um, directory. Um, so actually, oh, <laughs> and I'm back. Um, um, I forgot to also show the, the wish list as well. The wish list basically, before we were gathering, uh, uh, people were able to um, select items. Um, this is where it drops into the wish list, and they can they can share their items via email, send it to their partner to say, okay, you know, here's some ideas for where we want to go, sort of thing. Um, and I didn't show the contact form either, but if you've seen one contact form, you've pretty much seen them all. Um, I just really like the photo. I reckon it's a really nice color. Um, yeah, and then these obviously go through to um, to emails. 
So yeah, so that just wraps up the little piece on the case study for Wine Geelong and um, go to winegeelong.com.au in a couple of hours and it will be live. Cheers.